homecoming day for food theory. We're going out, we're buying some ice cream, and Matthew is wearing the only sunglasses he could find. I don't have <laughs> a pair of sunglasses at this point. This is like an advertisement for 1983, what you're wearing right now. This white jacket, these like insane sunglasses. These are actually my eye surgery sunglasses. I was gonna say, <laughs> never gonna give you up. <laughs> internet welcome to food theory the show that believe it or not is even better after you pop it into the microwave theorists if you've been with the food theory channel since the beginning you know that i'm a man who values my cake efficiency and it doesn't get any easier than boxed cake mixes am i right wrong i spent an entire episode showing you how the seemingly simple directions on the back of boxed cakes are in fact needlessly complex and redundant you don't need those eggs there people you could be saving five heck even ten seconds Every time you make yourself a boxed cake, just think of the things that you could be doing with all that spare time. Like hitting the notification bell, mayhaps? Point is, I've been striving to reach the mountaintop of cake efficiency for the better part of a year. But if a recent TikTok trend is to be believed, there's still one hill I've yet to climb. Pour your McFlurry into a bowl and add some self-raising flour and pop it in the microwave for around two minutes. And this is the result. It's a McFlurry cake and it tastes so good. All right, TikTok, you had my curiosity, but now you've got my attention. Here I am making episodes about reducing four cake ingredients down to three. Meanwhile, y'all are out there making two ingredient cakes, using fast food, and in the microwave? The lazy part of my brain is so turned on right now. Now, just to be clear, two ingredient ice cream mug cakes were around long before Emma Canham's TikTok, but she definitely deserves credit for putting it on our collective radar in 2021. I mean, a McFlurry cake? Come on, that is just fun, and it sounds delicious, which is exactly why Steph and I picked up a McFlurry, some self-rising flour, and tried it ourselves. What a fun festive cup. And also, not mixed at all. There's apparently a miscommunication. See, the spoon is so awkwardly designed because it's meant to be plugged into the machine and then chuck around so that the topping gets distributed throughout the flurry, as it were. What you have served me here is a cup of ice cream plus topping. After a bit of trial and error, we landed on two parts ice cream to one part flour and one minute, 45 seconds in the microwave. It's fine. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. That's the thing. I was going to say, is this cake or is this bread? Did we make like a sweet bread? Right? It's very lightly sweet. It's not as sweet as the ice cream or the cookies in it would lead you to believe. I mean, it has the consistent... Skip. Look at him looking guilty over there. So, <laughs> as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, <laughs> like it's a little bit firmer than a typical cake. It's like a micro, it, 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 you a, can feel the effects of the microwave a yeah. little bit, but honestly, if you cook this in the oven, you might have like a really legitimate cake. Right, it's not bad. Yeah. Not bad for a cake so, that was literally made with two ingredients, in two minutes of cook time. Yeah. So while I definitely think that TikTok's overhyping the deliciousness of the McFlurry cake, can't help but wonder if there's something here. After all, this cake did bake ridiculously fast, and it's not like the McFlurry is the only frozen fast food dessert out there. Might a different dessert make for a better tasting cake? Or is there something special about the McFlurry that allows it to react with self-rising flour in a way that the other desserts don't? And this, theorists, is what we'll be testing today. Food Theory has taken the McFlurry cake trend and amping it up to to the next level. If there's another fast food dessert that works better as a two ingredient microwavable mug cake, we are gonna find it today. So strap in theorists, today's a fun one. Food Theory's gonna find out which fast food derived cake takes the cake for being a piece of cake to make. So in order to figure out which fast food desserts will and will not cake, let's first take a look at self rising flour, which is not the same thing as the more common all purpose flour. You see, self rising flour is a bit of a cheat ingredient, cause it's actually a mixture of three ingredients that you probably already have in your cupboard. All-purpose flour, baking powder, and salt. This mixture was invented in England back in the 1800s when sailors were using self-rising flour, or self-raising flour as the Brits tend to call it, as a simple way to make baked goods during long voyages at sea. Sort of like how I began using Top Ramen as a simple way to make food during my long voyage through college. So if you want to give today's experiment a try but you don't have self-rising flour in the house, don't worry. You can easily whip some up by mixing one cup of all-purpose flour 
one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That salt is a take it or leave it ingredient, by the way. The Brits tend not to include it. But what I want to know is how it works. How exactly is it that ice cream plus self-rising flour equals cake? Well, for one thing, a lot of ingredients in ice cream are redundant with traditional cake recipes. For example, here's a recipe for a basic vanilla cake alongside a recipe for brown butter ice cream. See how similar the ingredients are? Sugar? Check. Milk and cream? Check. Butter? Vanilla? Eggs? In the end, there are exactly three ingredients in the cake that are not in the ice cream. Our old friends, all-purpose flour, baking powder, and salt. So it's easy to see why two ingredient ice cream cakes are a thing. The two cheat ingredients involved are basically matching halves of a magical amulet that, when combined, form a really typical cake recipe. Of course, not every fast food dessert out there is gonna have all the ingredients present. The McFlurry doesn't contain eggs, for instance, and plenty of quick breads manage to rise without sugar involved. So what ingredient is actually necessary here? Clearly, something in the ice cream is reacting with the self-rising flour and causing the cake to rise. If we know what that one magic ingredient is, we won't have to waste our time or money testing fast food desserts that don't contain it. So what is the magic ingredient? For answers, let's take a closer look at self-rising flour and what makes it tick. The baking powder's role in all this is to act as the leavening agent, which gives the cake its rise. See, baking powder, which I suppose is a cheat ingredient in and of itself, is a mixture of baking soda, aka sodium bicarbonate, which is a base, acid salts, which are of course acidic, and a buffering material to keep the bases and acids from reacting prematurely. When water gets introduced into the equation, it sets off the whole acid-base reaction, which produces carbon dioxide. You know how breads and cakes have a bunch of air pockets in them that make them so fluffy and also so great at insulating? See also our bread glove episode for more on this. Yes, I made an episode where I wore bread on my hands in public. No, I will not apologize. Anyway, those air pockets are formed from carbon dioxide bubbles released during the reaction. How do they get stuck inside the cake? Well, that's flour's role in all this. Flour, when mixed with water and exposed to heat, hardens. This is what gives baked goods their structure, and this structure is what traps the air bubbles. As for the salt, aside from adding flavor, it helps absorb moisture that in turn reacts with the baking powder. So there you have it. The only additional thing that self-rising flour requires aside from heat is water, which means that there are a ton of fast food desserts capable of making a cake, at least in theory, in food. I'm, all right, I'm gonna stop. You guys get the point. Long story short, if a dessert is frozen, that means it has water. If it has water, that means it'll react with self-rising flour. And that means Steph and I have a lot of fast food restaurants to visit today. My body is not ready. I did an online fitness class this morning. Does that count? Yeah. Hey. I did a 10-minute Chloe Ting ab workout. This is going to negate that. <laughs> so I started driving us through town, looking like Rick Astley post-eye surgery, and we nabbed frozen desserts from every fast food restaurant that we passed. In addition to the Oreo McFlurry from McDonald's, we picked up a classic chocolate Frosty from Wendy's, as well as a vanilla Frosty. At Dairy Queen, we grabbed an orange Julius and a raspberry fudge bliss blizzard. By the way, can I just say how much I love that Dairy Queen shoots all of their blizzard products upside down? That is commitment, and I respect at DQ. Now, by the time Steph and I got to the Sonic drive-in, we were kind of hungry. Also, let it be known, <laughs> we came here for one item. We're leaving with four. <laughs> And I'm regretting not getting a fifth. <laughs> I might get a fifth before we leave this parking lot. Sonic! I haven't been to a Sonic in years, okay? <laughs> Parked him really far. At Sonic, we ordered an Oreo Big Scoop cookie dough blast and a soft serve vanilla cone and maybe a couple other things. Put the lime in the Coke Zero, you drink it all up. Ooh, that's good. Only thing that would make it better if it was Harris Teeter Zero Calorie Diet Cola. Oh my god, we gotta go. Ready? Let's get going. <laughs> Yeah, these are my sunglasses. We haven't been shopping in a really long time, you guys. We got them in a hospital. <laughs> We ordered a bit more than planned at Burger King, too. So since the idea behind this episode is to, one, see if the McFlurry mug cake can actually work, and then, two, decide if there's anything better than the McFlurry mug cake, we're going around to all the different fast food restaurants to get their signature desserts and see, hey, what can we make a cake out of? And at Burger King, growing up, my favorite fast food dessert was the Hershey's Sunday Pie. <laughs> So we're taking an ice cream pie and we're trying to transform it into a non-ice cream cake. Cake, yes. Brilliant. There it is. Meanwhile, while we were there, I also saw that they had frozen Cokes. You know, I'm still... We're just, we're just gonna get a frozen Coke. We're I'm, gonna see how it goes. I'm still a fan of Coke. That Whopper while we were at Burger King. 
Whoppers are so good. I know. We we give Burger King a hard time on this channel. God, we do so many takedowns of Burger King, but, but the Whopper so is so good. I know. It's great. I just like it so much. I don't like their Twitch advertising strategy, but I do like their flame broiled strategy. It's so good. So one last stop. It's to a local fast food chain here called Cookout, and it is known for their milkshakes. They have probably what, 40 different things you can mix into milkshakes? Their thing is milkshakes. And so my hope is that my go-to order of a chocolate banana pudding Oreo, Oreo milkshake will actually yield the best mug cake today. It does sound promising. At that point, having exhausted every single cup holder in the car, even the two on Ollie's car seat, we returned home. I was curious to find out whether Skip had forgiven me for the tongue lashing I gave him earlier. Come on, come on, give, give, give him a little kiss. Give him a little kiss. Oh. Fortunately, Skip had put the whole ordeal behind him. An overpowering smell of desserts had Ollie on his best behavior too. Oh, what's that tasty thing called? I think that might be some soft serve ice cream. Oh, that was very nicely asked for. Yes, of course, Bean, absolutely. Oh, good bites. How is it? Is that good? <laughs> hey, Ollie, do you want to try a little bit of our cake, too? We, tried, we made a little bit of cake. Tell me what you think. Yeah, it's not every day that a two-year-old turns down cake. So I'm hoping some of the other contenders turn out better than the McFlurry did. Anyway, Steph and I proceeded to add self-rising flour to each fast food dessert. We then popped the batter into the microwave where I kept a close, close eye on everything. You're just walking backwards. That does not look like a moonwalk. All right, I could have probably paid more attention to the mug cakes, but if I had, this portion of the video would have been way more boring. Anyway, we tasted each individual mug cake as it came out of the microwave. First up was the Oreo Sonic Blast, which turned out pretty much exactly like the McFlurry cake did. Oh, oh, that's nice. It's still not very sweet no. is the thing. Huh, mm -mm. huh. It still tastes just like kind of plain cake. Like it doesn't have, again, a lot of that vanilla flavor, a lot of chocolate flavor, but it's nice. It's mm -hmm. very good. We then moved on to the chocolate frosty. I'm very concerned about this monstrosity. Oh no. Looks like something out of a horror movie. Whoa, hey yo. If you have tryptinophobia or that fear of holes, this is not the cake this for you. This is not your cake. Ooh, ooh, it's wacky. Is that the malt that expanded in like a weird way? Why is it oh, orange? Oh, what weird. What about this is orange? Oh, this is weird and it smells bad. You know that consistency that uh, cranberry sauce has when mm -hmm. it comes straight out of a can? That's what this is. Ooh, ooh Wendy's, I, I love your Frosties, but maybe we don't make them into cake. It's like, okay. I mean, here's the thing. It's not great to look at. Texture-wise, on par with Sonic. Taste-wise, I mean, again, it's just plain cake. The vanilla Frosty tasted similar and had the exact same gummy cake texture. The soft serve ice cream cone from Sonic, however, had a great cake texture. As for the taste, eh. I can tell you that this tastes like a pancake, which is really? good. Yeah, it's, I mean, here's the thing. Pancakes aren't super flavorful, but it's pretty good here, guys. Okay, I like pancakes. This is moist. Mm -hmm. It's flake, like flaky. It's crumbly. It's crumbly. It's crumbly like a real cake should yeah, be. Yeah, it's soft. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, plain vanilla cake is actually like plain vanilla ice cream. It's so far the best. It's the winner. So far. By far, yep. hands down. Mm -hmm. Oh, yay, we got a good one. Wow. I don't know what it says about two ingredient fast food mug cakes when the one that tastes like a pancake is the runaway winner so far, but that's where the bar is at, I'm afraid. Next up was the Dairy Queen Blizzard. Both Steph and I had high expectations for this one because its batter had a really strong raspberry flavor. When it came out of the microwave, though, the raspberry taste was nowhere to be found. And Dairy Queen's other contender, the creamsicle flavored orange julie didn't fare any better. So this is Orange Julius. Ooh, He's... How does it look? Mm. Floppy. There we go. He's looking a lot like like those frosty cakes, though. Yeah, he's super gelatinous. <laughs> it's like the blob. It smells like orange, and then it doesn't taste like orange at all. Yeah, it's yeah. It just tastes like mostly cooked flour. Mm-hmm. Well. At this point, I was kind of starting to worry that we weren't going to find any real winners in the bunch. I mean, sure, some of these cakes were edible, but it's not what we set out to do. I was hoping at least one of the frozen treats would taste better in cake form, but so far, nothing was even close. Second episode on a theorist channel in as many weeks. 
to disprove a TikTok theory. She was hyping it up in that TikTok. She's like, this is the most delicious thing ever. And my friends who have tried this say it's amazing as well. It's not. Next. Next. Now, I'll admit there was a lot of pressure on the cookout milkshake to perform. Not only was I rooting for it as the hometown favorite, but cookouts was the only milkshake in the running, meaning it was sort of competing on behalf of milkshakes everywhere. Oh, there's that nice chunk of banana right there. <laughs> just sitting there just in the bottom. Just sitting there right at just the bottom. Just like it does in the milkshake. Oh, huh. all right. Here. You know what? This one's all right. It has the most flavor. Are you a little biased? Let me check. I might be. Here, let me let me give you the taste. Oh, huh. Okay, so interesting. Actually, the banana helps a lot. It not only helps actually eating the banana, but it seems to have perfused throughout the cake. So you actually get like a little bit of banana flavor, and then you get kind of that twice baked cookie of the Oreo just like kind of in there. It's actually really pretty good. Texture not, not super duper, but it is moist. Like if you mixed this with some toppings or maybe like put some, I don't know, like syrup or icing on it. I think you could, you could reasonably call this a dessert. In the end, my chocolate banana pudding Oreo milkshake had the most flavor of any contenders thanks to all the chunky ingredients, but we weren't able to get a good crumbly cake-like consistency out of the milkshake, even with some extra time in the microwave. At this point, I was getting desperate and we were getting into the weird entries. Burger King's Hershey Sunday Pie was a spontaneous last minute addition to today's experiment for no real reason other than the fact that I thought turning a pie into cake was really funny as I was waiting in the fast food takeout line. And surprisingly, the Sunday pie held its own. And it doesn't look as, you know, triggering as some of the other ones have. <laughs> Actually, it looks really good. It does. It, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Oh, yes, it has a crumb ooh. texture again. Oh, it has wow. an actual crumb consistency. Ooh, okay, we, the, we may have not mixed the flour as well as I would hoped. But, it started out drier, so it ended up being a little bit drier, yeah. but honestly, I don't hate it. It actually tastes like chocolate for the first time in any of these. And we've had so many of these with chocolate in them. Last and definitely least, we had the frozen Coke from Burger King. Friends, I'm not even gonna pretend that this one stood a chance. It was doomed from the beginning. I think we'll be really lucky to end up with anything that even solidifies in this one. I can't even get the flour to dissolve. It is literally just like <laughs> chunking in there. Are you sure that's not marshmallows? It looks like Swiss Miss hot chocolate. It, it looks like that. It's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in the microwave, Stephanie. Throw it in. Chuck it in there. Ugh, gross. We're just gonna have hot burned Coke. Ugh. Not even you'll drink that. No, it's true. <laughs> not even I will drink that. That's a face. <laughs> oh no, we're not eating that. We're not. No, we're not eating that. Ooh. It has kind of a... How's the bouquet? I, I wish I could describe it to you. I wish I could describe it to you. Here, try. Smell vision. Oh no, it smells like hot Coke. I mean, here's the thing. It, it formulated something... <laughs> <laughs> that jiggle when it flopped in there, man. You know it's... You, you, you know it's jelly because jam don't shake. <laughs> oh my gosh. There, So great, huh? So good. It's great. You know, of all of these, this one's probably the best for your waistline. Because you're, you're not gonna, gonna you're not gonna swallow it. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. So what can we conclude from all of this? Well, self-rising flour is a really easy to use product capable of creating cake from pretty much any delicious meltable treat you throw at it. But is it capable of creating good cake when the only other ingredient is fast food? Eh, not so much. I think Ollie's reaction says it all though. When he came into the kitchen, he was like, I want ice cream. And we gave him ice cream. And then I'm like, here's this cake made out of ice cream. And he took it out of his mouth and handed it back to me. That right there says it all, friends. If you want a cake, make a cake. If you want ice cream, eat ice cream. Is this actually saving you a whole lot of work? Not really. You still have to go out and get the ice cream. Right, you're still getting the ice cream. You still have to have the, en the enriched flour that self rises. And what are you getting? An okay cake. Like, at best, you're getting an okay cake. This is one of those times where, go figure, a hack that you saw online didn't actually produce the magical results that people tell you. 
Who was the winner today? All the fast food companies that got us to spend an egregious amount of money on their various desserts. Who was the loser today? Steph and I, because we just consumed a lot of calories and none of it was worth it. Thanks for watching, theorists. I just put hot, flour-saturated Coke in my mouth. If that's not deserving of a subscription button click, I don't know what is. Despite what you may have seen today, Steph and I have actually been having a lot of fun with these taste test videos lately. Be sure to check out our Diet Cola Tournament episode. That's right, I put my love of Diet Coke to the test. A blind taste test, to be more precise. And spoiler alert, Diet Coke did not win the tournament. That's right, turns out there's another diet soda out there that I like the taste of even more. Some of the tells me though it'd be pretty mediocre in a two ingredient mug cake but hey that's just a theory a food theory bon appetit